It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. It would be a little disingenuous of me if I didn't start this review by saying I've been a huge Super Mario fan for years. I've bought pretty much every mainline game since the Wii. I have a Luigi stuffed doll. Hell, me and my brother even went as Mario and Luigi for Halloween when we were super young. But I do want to keep my opinion of this movie objective and try and review this movie with an open mind. That being said, I can actually really understand why this movie got the low critical reception that it did. Don't get me wrong, I loved this movie and I had a great time with it. But even a non critical viewer could probably feel that this movie has some problems. Although I think most casual viewers would have some problems putting their finger on exactly what it is. Though to me, and it was pretty obvious, and I'm surprised to say that this movie has some of the worst pacing of any feature length film I have ever seen. The first act of this movie is a never ending roller coaster of just thing after thing. So much stuff happens in this movie without ever giving the audience time to think or digest what even just happened. I get that this is a kids and family movie, but it feels like this movie was designed to hold the attention of those TikTok users who watch the videos of Family Guy with the cheaply produced mobile game footage underneath it. This also comes with the side effect of the fact that none of the characters in this movie except for Mario and Luigi have any real character development to speak of. Donkey Kong gets some, but it's played as a joke and it's quite literally one line of dialogue, so I'd hardly even count it. I just think that this movie really could have benefited from an extra 15 minutes of runtime spread out throughout the movie. Because as it stands right now, it's just not really a spectacularly written story. That being said, the story beats for this movie are also really odd as well, especially in the first act. Like the inciting incident of how Mario gets to the Mushroom Kingdom is, I mean, it's just kind of random. It makes zero sense, but I guess I can't really complain too much. I would like to believe that it's connected to the scene that came directly before it, but that's never even implied, so I find that hard to believe. All of that said, that's most of my major criticisms for this movie. I think that this movie just needs to give its characters and moments time to breathe. There are scenes where we do get time to properly assess and digest what is happening, but for a lot of the second act of the movie, it's not a luxury that we're afforded for some reason. That being said, the third act of this movie f***ing slaps. I think that there's only one very short clip of any of the promotional footage that's actually from the third act of the movie. They did a very good job of not spoiling it in the trailers and promotional footage. You'll notice this if you go to see the movie, but you'll notice that a lot of the dialogue in the trailers is very clearly cut to make the plot a secret, which is good because the plot that they actually gave us is a lot more fun and a lot less predictable than the plot that was in the trailers. I think the thing that people probably have the most reservations about is the voice cast most specifically Chris Pratt's Mario. And I'm glad to say, in my humble opinion, it was just okay. It was clear around the second or third trailer that he wasn't gonna be the best choice for Mario. That being said, I do think he did a good job and he actually fits quite well. My problem isn't even with the voice that he does, it's mostly with the delivery. He sounds like he's not having nearly as much fun as anybody else in the voice cast by a mile. That aside for a second, he does do a sufficient job and I'm satisfied with the performance that he gave. But I will say that you're probably not even gonna remember that it's Chris Pratt while you're watching the movie. There may be two lines that I can think of where the regular Chris Pratt voice just kind of slips through, but Chris Pratt does the New Yorker accent pretty well. Also, I want credit for being one of the three people who didn't immediately crucify Chris Pratt after the first trailer. Now, Jack Black though, oh my god. That was 100% the best and most fun voice acting I have heard in a long time. Jack Black does an amazing job as coming off as this threatening, yet goofy iteration of Bowser. There is one moment that involves Bowser and a piano, and it's gonna make me giggle for the next few months every time I think about it. And I want to specifically give credit to Jack Black, because if anybody else was doing that performance, it wouldn't have been as good. Jack Black's delivery is what sells, like, half of his performance. You can tell for 100% certain that Jack Black is having more fun than anyone on the voice cast. He shines by miles and miles. He did an amazing job in this movie and I could be gushing about it all day, but let's go ahead and move to the rest of the voice cast. Charlie Day was also an amazing choice and he was my second favorite performance in the movie. He did a really great job as Luigi and to me, I think he's even like the de facto voice of Luigi now. 
But in my opinion, Luigi was drastically underutilized for a lot of this movie. He really isn't that present at all. I completely understand why though. It does serve the story, but as Luigi's biggest fan, I can't say that I wasn't a little disappointed. It's not gonna affect my score, I did just kinda wanna touch on that. Peach is also a great character. Some people are upset that she's kinda just baby's first femme fatale, and to be completely honest with you, I kinda can see why. I mean, obviously there are some people who are just sexist and don't like strong women characters, but my problem with her is just that it feels like they stole Daisy's personality and inflicted it on Peach. That being said, I'm not really sure what they could have done with Princess Peach's normal, somewhat dainty personality that would have been really interesting to watch for an hour and a half, nor would her regular personality really suit the story that they went for. So I think it does work. And I also really do like Anna Taylor-Joy as Princess Peach as well. She did an amazing job, and for a lot of it, she seemed to be having a really good time in the voice booth. Now, the most surprising cast to me personally was Keegan Michael Key as Toad. On paper, it shouldn't work and it should be quite disturbing and a horrible experience that will scar children for years to come. But to my surprise, and to the movie's avail, it actually works really damn well. Keegan Michael Key does a great job at making Toad such a damn fun character in this movie. The scene that comes immediately after when Toad reached the castle is 100% the funniest interaction in this movie, in my opinion. And once again, that needs to be accredited to the fact that Keegan Michael Key just does a really good job delivering this. Also, I do want to touch on the fact that Kari Payton plays King Penguin. He's not a major character in this movie, but he's really fun. And I'm just one of those people who finds the deep voice tiny man trope to be a little silly, so I liked it. I also just finished watching the entirety of The Walking Dead, so I couldn't stop thinking of King Ezekiel either. Something that had literally no reason to go as hard as it did in this movie, though, was the combat choreography. There are a few fights in this movie that get surprisingly brutal and are all choreographed unbelievably well. I wouldn't say that they weren't afraid to show violence, but they definitely knew how to keep it PG while making it still incredibly obvious that Mario should be dead. Like, there are times in this movie where Mario seems to only be alive to spite Bowser, but the third act fight in this movie is some of the craziest sh** I have seen in a long time, especially from a family movie. I genuinely compared this to Dragon Ball Z with some of the sh** that Mario pulled at the end of this movie. It was unbelievably amazing. Sound design. Usually, in and of itself, it's not something I tend to touch on when I review movies, but because Mario has such a deep pool of sounds to pull from, I think it's something we need to talk about. This movie being faithful and using all of the original Mario sound effects is awesome. I really liked hearing some of the sound effects, like the Koopa shells or the Shy Guy little sounds that they make, I don't know what that is. But it was nice to hear them on the big screen. But the thing that you probably all care about is the music, which is awesome, but we need to talk about the fact that this movie has licensed music at all. I genuinely don't understand why there's any licensed music in this movie at all. Like seriously, Mario has such a deep pool of beloved bangers, I found it weird that they need to use 2010's pop music in the training montage. I don't really have an actual issue with it. Like I'm aware that this is a family movie and it's made by Illumination. They were going to do this. But I would have preferred to hear Rainbow Ride over a song that peaked in Shrek 2. Other than that, all of the Mario renditions in this movie are fire. I don't really think I need to say that, but I want to touch on how good these are. I mean, even the trailer versions of these songs are just straight bangers. I think the highlight to me was the clip that they released the day before the launch of the movie when Princess Peach hits the flagpole. It made me so damn giddy to hear this stage clear music in theaters. Also, you know Nintendo had to be gritting their teeth when they realized that they were going to have to officially release a Mario soundtrack on Spotify now. It comes out this Friday, which is when I should be releasing this video, so I am very much looking forward to that. In conclusion though, I'm gonna have to give this movie a 6 out of 10 on the critical score. You have to remember, at the end of the day, no matter how much we love Mario, this is still a movie, and it still needs to be held to the same criticisms and standards as one. From a purely objective standpoint, this movie had some pretty serious pacing and writing issues, and as much as I love the movie, I just can't ignore them. But if you're like me and you just came to watch this movie for a good time, then it's an easy 8.5 out of 10. But if you're copying my personality and identity and you're also a Super Mario fan, then this movie is is an easy 10 out of 10. This movie was loads of fun for anybody who even likes Super Mario. This movie was purely made from a place of care and love for Mario as not only a franchise that makes Nintendo oodles of money every year, but as a franchise that people grew up with, that people respect, that people love. And I'm glad that after years of 
game adaptations, we finally get this. You know, it's actually kind of funny. We got this and then The Last of Us earlier this year. It only took like 30 fucking years, but it seems like they finally figured out what they're doing when it comes to video game adaptations. Once again, though, I would highly recommend you go see this movie in theaters if you want to have a good time. It is an amazing use of an hour and 30 minutes and like $15, depending on where you live and whether or not you're a minor. I'm excited for this movie to come out on Blu-ray, and I hope it's sooner than later because I can't wait to watch this movie again and again. Anyway, thank you guys so much for 25,000 subscribers. Me, Nathan, and Kennedy are gonna go deposit the millions of dollars that you guys made me. I'm not gonna question that. We will see you guys next week when I will watch Descendants and complain about it because I have no life. But I still do have more of a life than the guy who left 39 comments complaining about my Disney Zombies video. Seriously, I was getting comments on this video for an hour and a half. The video is 35 minutes. Regardless, have a great Christmas Eve and we'll see you guys next week. Well, it's Christmas somewhere. Oh.